Vishnu Bhad, Paramahansa, Bhari Raja, Kachari, Asatari, Shatashi, Shri Madhis, Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti, Vedanta, Goswami, Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnav Rinda Ki Jai. Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Prem Shri Gahoshi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Rinda Ki Jai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopi Nashama Kund Radha Kund Giri Govardhan Ki Jai. Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai. Shri Amayapur Navadweep Dham Ki Jai. Shri Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai. Shri Jagannath Swami Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai. Gaur Prem Anandi. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Sri Guru Garanga. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. All glories to Vishnu Jan Swami Kija. No I'm Vishnu Bharai Krishna Pishtai Buddha Shmari Bhakti Vana Swami Kamini Namaste. Saraswati Devi Guru Guru Pacharani Guru Shesha Shri Vari Pishtai Pishtai. So that's it. <laughs> no more to say. <laughs> uh, we've been practicing the kirtan lately. Huh? And it shows, really, really shows. And uh, the kirtan is just getting better and better. Huh? So that's the symptom of spiritual life. <laughs> it just gets better and better. And after 40 years of doing this Hare Krishna stuff, it only gets better and better and better. Huh? There's two kinds of happiness described in Bhagavad Gita. The one is material happiness. And it's described, it's like nectar in the beginning and poison at the end. Huh? Because one wants to enjoy sense gratification. And so, perform so many sinful activities. But uh, there may be some tiny bit of enjoyment in that. But as Prabhupada calls it, it's, it's flickering. Huh? It's just there for a few seconds, and then it finishes, it ends. And guess what? Now you have karma. Because why? You misused God's property for your enjoyment. So the karma will cause suffering, especially at the end of life. I can't imagine how horrible it must be to be conditioned to thinking that happiness is only in material enjoyment. And then come to the end of life and the senses are becoming weak and the body is breaking down and the health is finished. And, um, you know, death is coming, it's tilted. Yeah. And what can you do? Huh? You have no spiritual life. You have no pious credits. You have no realization of, of God or anything. Huh? And there you are in the hospital with the tubes going in. But can you imagine that? That, how, that must be so horrible. So nectar in the beginning, huh? young boys and girls going to school, going to parties, taking drugs, having sex, very nice. Nectar. Huh? But then as they get older and older and older and older, more it becomes poison. But this devotional service is the opposite. In the beginning is poison. Huh? You have to read so many big thick books. <laughs> and give up all of these things that everybody thinks is very nice. And uh, then you have to chant this mantra over and over so many times. How terrible. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you persist somehow or other, it only gets better. Huh? Actually, it's nectar at the beginning and nectar at the end. But the, our problem is, we're not fit to relish it, Nectar. Huh? What's a good example? Let's say uh, I know nothing about art. 
and I go to some big museum, the Louvre, or the Metropolitan Museum in New York. Uh, and here's all of these fantastic pieces of art, really the best, the excellent art of the whole world. But I know nothing about it. So I'm looking at this, you know, Michelangelo and Picasso and all this stuff, and I'm just like, duh. <laughs> you know, why did he paint their face from two sides at the same time? You know, and so I can't relish it. Huh? It's there, it's right in front of me, the best art in the whole world. But I have no taste. See, that's our problem. Krishna is right there. Krishna is right in front of us. He's going, come on, let's dance, let's party. Huh? And you're going, ah, what is this mantra stuff? And You know, you have no taste. That's the problem. Everything is there in Bhagavad Gita. Everything is there in the scriptures. But people don't appreciate it, or they can't appreciate it, huh? because they don't have the ability to understand it. So that's why we print so many big, thick books, huh? Vedanta Sutra and all this stuff, just to give people a taste so you can appreciate the devotional service. W would you bring the Vedanta Sutra books from in there? Let me show them. We go to a lot of trouble to make the transcendental books available. Uh, for me, it was like four months of 12, 14 hours a day work to bring out this Vedanta Sutra. It's on top shelf. And uh, what's taking him so long? Come on, come on. Okay. Well, I want to make a point. See? Big, thick books. <laughs> Pretty cover. Huh? But inside, it's all text. <laughs> no pictures? <laughs> no pictures. <laughs> no, I... Uh, well, you're the artist. Come on, get busy. <laughs> so, the whole idea is that the scriptures give the absolute truth. Huh? Absolute truth is that truth, once knowing which, there is nothing further to be known. Why? Because everything that we experience is within the absolute truth. Everything that we experience, or every state of consciousness, every activity, huh? anything that we can experience, anything that is possible to experience, is explained by the same absolute truth. There's no difference. In material consciousness, if someone moves from one situation to another situation, then everything changes. Can you turn the fan over here? No? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. It's the hot. Yeah, I'm sweating. That was a good kirtan. <laughs> Man, that was really good. <clears throat> so if you change, like uh, you go from U.S. to Mexico, all of a sudden everybody's speaking Spanish. <laughs> what are they saying? I don't know. Huh? So we have to change our knowledge. We have to learn the language. We have to learn the customs. Otherwise, we can't be comfortable in our new environment. But if we know the absolute truth, huh? If we know consciousness and we know rasa tattva, then we can understand. Just by looking at someone's face, we can understand their whole life story. Huh? What are they doing there? What are they trying to do? Um, um, maybe we can move this. Can we move this out of the way? Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, that's better. And then just move it, and then we'll move it back later. Okay. So. Um, we want everybody to know this absolute truth. Then they can't be deceived. Huh? Well, why would you be deceived if you didn't know the absolute truth? Because there are many rascals who want to cheat you. 
Huh? They want to tell you, you're just a body. You're just this piece of meat. And to enjoy life, to be successful in life, means to enjoy the senses of this body and to accumulate possessions relative to the body and to uh, rub this body up against other bodies. <laughs> <laughs> this is what life is all about. Huh? Or then there's the so-called spiritual teachers huh? who say, oh, don't worry, you're, you're one with God. Huh? Everything is one. We are all one. Huh? And so it, it does not matter if you have your money or I have your money. So give me your money. Huh? They're talking like that. Rascals. So uh, 